Welcome to Mind Your Small Business, a brand new podcast which makes starting or running a business easier. This week, we're going to start at the very beginning and look at the first steps actually starting up. I'm Gordon Rutherford from AXA, and this week I'm delighted to be joined by Holly Tucker, MBE, and Amber Craddock. In 2006, along with Sophie Cornish, Holly founded Not In The High Street, the home of the UK's best small creative businesses, and followed that up in 2017 with Holly & Co., which is a rich source of small business advice and inspiration, championing and supporting small businesses through their journey. So, a perfect guest for today. Now, to Amber. After running it as a hobby business for many years, Amber formally launched Amber's Car Care, a business offering valets and detailing for cars and motorbikes in February last year. So, good morning, Holly and Amber. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us today. Let's get the ball rolling with some big and perhaps surprising numbers. According to a recent report from Tile by Nat West, 2020 saw a 30% increase in new businesses being started. In fact, more than three quarters of a million businesses were created in the UK last year, and that's an all-time UK record. They are staggering numbers, and I'd like to ask you, Holly, to begin. Why do you think we saw such a volume of start-ups amidst a horrible global pandemic. I mean, should we not have experienced the opposite? I think that it was an extraordinary moment where a lot of people started assessing their lives. Um, They decided that actually, potentially, this was the moment to go for it. And I'm sure that anyone listening will know of someone or might be that person themselves. Also, of course, we've had some awful statistics about those in industries such as hospitality losing their jobs. And so it has been right um, as a moment in society where people have said, you know what, I've been dreaming about this dream for a long time. I think I'm going to go for it. Or people have thought, I'm going to create a side hustle because I'm slightly nervous about having one income. I want to start to think about my future as being a founder. Um, And so this is why these statistics have come about. And aren't they fantastic? No, they are. I mean, thanks, Holly. And um, let's hold that thought in side hustles. And we might well come back to that in uh, in a future episode. But I'd now like to turn to Amber. You were one of those startups last year, albeit just before the pandemic broke. I mean, When this horrible thing happened, what were your thoughts having just started a business? Yeah, so I I started, I got my first few customers and then it was, oh dear, lockdown. What am I going to do? At first I sort of panicked, um, but I thought, you know what? It's not going to last forever, so don't worry about it. My business will come back. Um, I spoke to all my customers, we explained it, we talked about it. Um, and basically I just got myself a little part-time job just to see me through, but I was, uh, I was worried, but then I just thought, you know what? Pandemics won't last forever. So I can always come back to my passion. Okay. Um, and, and listen, we will come back to that concept of passion again later on. I'm sure about that. Um, let's put the virus to one side for now, Amber, if we can. Um, and if we, if we go back a little bit further, tell me a wee bit more about what prompted you to start Amber's Car Care. Well, as I say, it was a hobby for, for many years. Um, and before I actually started my business, and I was actually a primary school teacher for 12 years. And um, during that time, about five years ago, I suffered a nervous breakdown. And it was like the the car business, the car, the detail and the valeting, it was my way out. It was a nice, calming way of sort of refocusing myself. And I just thought, you know what, let's just quit teaching. Let's just change change tact. Um, I retrained as a motor mechanic, an MOT tester, uh, just to get some more skills in and just went for it. Wow. That it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's incredibly, incredibly powerful and empowering and motivating. Um, thanks for sharing that. Holly, what about not in the high street? I mean, how did how did that come about? Not on the High Street came about through a personal experience where I ran my own small business and decided to go and sell my wares um, at a local fair, which there wasn't one. So I decided to set up the fair so that I could sell my wares. 
And then after a few years of realising that the town hall was an archaic way for small businesses to sell incredible products, I decided to create the new town hall roof, which was the internet, and do some Something which we now call is a marketplace so we have customers coming on to find small businesses now this was back in 2005 2006 that I created with, along with Sophie not on the high street um, and it you know is an, an amazing business that has given rise to support um, 95% female founders um, in a sort of new way of working where they were able to potentially raise families, have successful businesses, uh, be creatively fulfilled um, and a sort of a world that didn't exist um, unbelievably at, at the time that we launched. And I think that's a really interesting thing because, you know, I guess, I guess, when you do something that doesn't exist previously. And on one hand, you have an absolute USP, but in the other, how do you know you're doing the right thing? So when you were starting out, Holly, what kept you awake at night when you were when you were actually embarking upon this? I think what didn't keep me awake is the point. Um, I think that Amber will absolutely um, ag ag probably agree with this, that when you start a business, uh, you ver you're very much alone. You have to be the cheerleader of your dreams. Um, normally what you create hasn't you know, been created before. Um, and so certainly when you begin, everything is this huge learning curve. You, you're the master of everything. You know, you don't have staff. You've got to be doing the accounts along with the washing up, hiring, creating technology, you know, um, creating products, hosting um, sponsors, whatever it is, um, it's an amazing journey. Um, one of the things that definitely did keep me awake was the lack of funding and um, how quickly you can run out of cash. Um, and that saw some precarious roller coaster moments in our beginning where we didn't nearly survive quite a few times. Um, but I'm glad to say that we, in the end, did. We managed to raise the money um, and create Not on the High Street to what it is today. Again, I think most businesses in their first 12 months find those challenges and they have those moments, those bumps in the road where they think, can I go on? Um, so again, to yourself, Holly, how important would you say resilience is in the toolbox of someone starting up a business? Well, re resilience and, and loyalty to your idea is the glue which binds all the other tools together. Without it, you can't exist. You know, very much a founder's journey is faking it till you make it, um, you know, selling the dream before you've actually done anything. Um, and that requires you to have passion in your belly, enthusiasm seeping out of every single pore. And that drives this loyalty, this fierceness, mother lion, I call it, towards your business. And, and it allows you to become strong. And strength is what you need and your conviction to carry this business through, um, but also to um, help others see what you see. Um, and so I would say without resilience, um, it, it is a very, very difficult path. And turning to yourself, Anne, but I mean, what would you say your biggest early stage challenges were? Well, first of all, I'm a woman in a man's sort of um, business world. Um, you wouldn't, you don't normally see women working on cars or cleaning cars. It's male dominant. Um, that was one of the biggest things. But uh, well, I'm professional enough to just get by it. But uh, one of the hardest things about starting up was making sure I wasn't giving my time away for free. It's like your time is money at the end of the day. I love what I do. And if a customer asks for a basic wash, I have to make sure I just give that basic wash, even though I know my skills can provide better. But then I use that passion to kind of upsell items for my business and say, well, this is what the basic wash offers. However, if you add this and this, you can have this longer protection. It will make your car look shinier for longer. I can do this, which will um, protect your paintwork. And using that passion and, use, and having the conversation with the customers to try and upsell your, well, my, my skills, um, show them a personal portfolio of what, I can, what I've done before to try and boost things. But the main thing was don't give my time away for free. Don't give things away for free. <laughs>
It's great advice, and I think it's something that uh, every startup falls into at the beginning. And I freelanced for five years, and um, I remember the first contract I got, and somebody asked me what my day rate was, and I was frightened to give them a price because I thought if I said something, I would scare them away. So I was almost inclined to say, look, I'll just do this one for nothing. And, and But then, you know, when you actually sit down and you think about it, you think, wait a minute, I've, I've got something to offer here, something that's something that's different and something that's a bit special and people should be prepared to pay for it. And I think that's, if you're if it's a product or a service, then it's absolutely the same. But I do think it is a hurdle for many uh, people starting out to, to overcome. Um, what do you wish you had known before starting up, Amber? I wish I could have started sooner. <laughs> really as simple as that. I've never been happier. Um, I mean, I used to love the teaching, don't get me wrong. It's an absolute fantastic um career um but for me personally i wish i started sooner that's it <laughs> simple as that okay and the same question for yourself holly that i was enough that everything that i had um would be the tools that i required to do the whole journey i think small businesses are plagued with the imposter syndrome certainly women who start businesses and if i had known that actually my intuition, my drive, my energy, my creativity, my business sense was actually enough. And sure, there were some skills that I didn't know, but that I'd, I'd learned them along the way. Um, that is certainly I, something I'd like to tell my younger self. OK, thanks, Holly. One of the things we spoke about at the top of the podcast was the volume of businesses that are starting up amidst COVID. Would you say, uh, Holly, is there a right or wrong time to start a business? Well, no. I mean, I started not on the high street in a recession. Holly and Co's gone through a recession. Um, you know, we've had COVID to deal with. I think that you can put starting a business off for so many reasons. And I think that the landscape today, certainly compared to when I started not on high street in 2006, is ripe to help nurture small businesses. Um, there's so many tools, so much access, so much knowledge, so many cheerleaders out there. Um, so I would say, if you have an idea, stop procrastinating, get on with it. We have very few days on this planet um, and it is worth living them, doing what you love and loving what you do. Thanks, Holly. And yet, despite that, Amber, for many people, Although um, working for themselves is a dream scenario, they do procrastinate, just as just as Holly spoke about there. What, what do you think stops more people actually getting out of there and just doing it? To me, I think it's um, it's fear. It really is. It's the fear of failure, um, and that's that was one thing. Was like when I went from one completely different career to another one to working for myself. Um, a lot of people say, "Oh, you're brave." It's you know, I could never do that. And I said, "Well, why can't you?" I said, oh, well, I've got kids to think about. I don't have the money. What if it fails? There's no security. And it's said, so what? You, you create what you want. At the end of the day, things are not given to you. You strive for them and you take what you need or create what you need at the end of the day. So it's try not to have that fear, have changed that fear into something else because fear and excitement have the same um, symptoms. So change it into happiness and excitement. <laughs> OK, I mean, that's, uh, that's pretty inspirational. Oh, thank you all. <laughs> and obviously the, the, the whole theme of today's podcast is about starting up and uh, many of the listeners out there will be listening to this looking for uh, some tips and some advice and some inspiration to actually realise their dream and start that journey. So tell me, Holly, what's the one piece of advice you would uh, give to someone thinking about pursuing their dream and starting a business? Well, to get on with it. Um, if you're listening to this podcast and you have an idea, today can be your first day. And to understand that a business plan, although it's fantastic when raising money, is probably a bit of a waste of time because I no doubt it's blocking you from starting. Um, actually having a great plan for the next day, week, month um, will suffice because as any entrepreneur knows, Everything changes all the time. And so to think that you can plan it, to think that there's a perfect time, it's a little bit like having a child. You know, no one can tell you what it's like on the other side of motherhood. Um, and so I would say to absolutely 
persevere, go for it, um, and don't let anything stand in your way. And Amber? I fully agree with Holly there. It's just, just go for it. But at the same time, make sure you do your research. If you're going into a business like mine, there are a lot and lot of people out there. So research them. Um, and we know we don't like to talk about money, but it has to be one of the first things you really think about because that's what's going to help you with your lifestyle. So consider what com- income you need to live your lifestyle. Use that as sort of a baseline, factor in your bills that you need to pay out, materials, tools, vehicle costs. And then from, from there, from there, you can see how much you need to bring in each month, each week, each day, how many jobs you then need to complete each month, each week, each day to fulfill that target. But don't lose sight of um, make, giving yourself a wage. That's, that's it. Really, <laughs> which is critical because without a wage, you know, it's, it's difficult to survive. Listen, really fantastic advice, inspirational, uh, motivational, and um, if this podcast helps one person to go out and realise their dream tomorrow, then uh, then I'll go home happy. So today's takeaways from from our conversation, uh, you know, we spoke about um, cash is queen. Uh, you've both referenced the need for uh, for cash flow, the importance of cash flow, the need to make sure that you can pay yourself a wage and you know pay the bills, and then ensuring the cash continues to flow. To be resilient, you know, we spoke about being resilient, be prepared for hard knocks because they're going to come. And you've heard how tough it was for Holly Tucker, so you you know you're not alone when you go through those difficult moments. Do what you love. I think that was another big takeaway from today. Follow your passion because it's much easier to be brilliant at doing something you love than something you don't love. Uh, And to, to, you know, to be diligent, do your research, make sure you've got a plan, but at the same time, don't over plan, just to go for it, get on with it, go out there uh, and realise your dream. And, you know, you can make it happen. All that's left to say really today is a massive thank you um, for being brilliant today to Holly Tucker MBE from Not In The High Street and Holly and & Co and Amber Craddock from Amber's Car Care. Amber, tell us how people can find your business. Um, you can find my business. I have a website, www.amberscarcare.co.uk. I'm also on Facebook, Amber's Car Care and on Instagram, Amber's car care again. Okay, excellent. And Holly, I think everyone probably knows not in the high street, but what about Holly and Co? How can people find out more about that? Well, I write daily for the last five years on my Instagram at Holly Tucker. I also have a Sunday Times bestselling book, fantastically, that was out in May and aptly called Do What You Love, Love what you do, which is available in all good bookshops and online stores, um, which I think will really help people um, who are listening to this podcast. Fantastic. I've, I've read it and I can thoroughly recommend it. Thank you again to both Holly and Amber. If you've enjoyed this episode, you can subscribe to the series via your usual podcast app. And if you want to find out more about the Mind Your Small Business series, you can do so at www dot axa dot co dot uk forward slash podcast you can also get loads of brilliant small business advice from axa's business guardian angel site which is also at www dot axa dot co dot uk our next episode is on side hustles thanks to holly for bringing that up earlier on and we'll have two more special guests for that one so remember to tune in and we look forward to welcoming you thank you bye-bye